Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can bake a normal map using a cage. The reason you would use a cage is if you have a complicated model with lots of potentially overlapping geometry. The stage we're to do this with this piece is the high poly has been modelled and we've also made the low poly and unwrapped it. One other thing to note here is if I switch to rendered view is that the method I've used here uses the bevel shader. So the high poly model has materials assigned with a bevel shader plugged into the normal slot so that all the hard edges will be catching highlights. And it's that detail that we're going to be capturing into the normal map for our low poly. first thing we need to do is explode both the high poly and low poly models so that nothing is overlapping but that they still occupy the same space. But before we do that I'm going to remove the cables and grill from the front cabinet as these would be baked onto planes and also the screen as I'll be keeping it as a separate object because it's glass. With those out of the way, I begin going through the high poly first and I just grab parts and move them away from the main body. I do this with predictable amounts so it's easy to put back later. So grabbing the floor, we'll do G minus Z minus 0.2. Uh, these little rings that hold the pipes, G, Z minus 0.1. Front grill, G, Y minus 0.2. I'm just going to go through and do this for the entire model, then hide the high poly collection. Show the low poly and do the exact same thing by the exact same amounts. You can always temporarily unhide the high poly layer if you're not sure, but the goal is everything sitting in exactly the same place. Next, because we don't want to mess up the materials we have set on our high poly, we're going to make a duplicate of both the high poly and low poly and put them in a new collection called cages and hide the higher and low poly collections. All of the high poly parts can be joined into one object now. and we're going to give it a new material and make it a nice bright red so we can see it nice and clearly under our low poly cage. If you want you can make a material for your low poly cage as well as long as it contrasts with the high poly so you can clearly see that it's covering it. Now 
With the low poly cage selected, you can now go into edit mode and select the individual parts. Search for shrink fatten, mine's set to shift alt s and enlarge it until you can't see the high poly underneath. While operating the tool, press s to make sure the offset is set to even and hold shift to make the adjustments more controllable. You want to only go slightly larger than the high poly but without any areas clipping through. You can now go through and do this for the rest of the low poly cage model. If it's not possible to do this perfectly for a piece, you may have to adjust it map by manually edi editing the geometry. There will be some distortion in the normals in that area, but you can try to make it as minimal as you can. If you get any strange behaviour from the geometry, check your face orientation and that verts are all merged. Once you're happy with the cage, you can hide the bright red high poly cage or delete it as we won't be needing it again. Also hide the cage collection. Onto the baking part. If you haven't already, you can join all of the high poly parts together. This makes the baking process easier. In the render properties panel, go to the bake section and set the bake type to normal. Tick the box for selected to active and expand the drop down. Set the cage object to the one we've just made. This replaces the cage extrusion field, which will grey out. The max ray distance is how far into the model the rays will penetrate for any low recessed areas. You can either find the deepest recess on the model and measure it, or take an educated guess from how much you extruded while modelling. For the next part, I find it easiest to split the view, once vertically and then once horizontally. with a shady ed shader editor in the bottom and an image editor in the top. Select the low poly and create a new material in the shader editor. In the image editor, create a new image and give it a name and set the resolution. The higher the res, the longer it will take and the ac more accurate it will be. Depending on your computer, baking can take some time. You can bake test renders at low resolutions, but larger res maps can also be downsized in Photoshop. So it's up to you what you want to try. Personally, I usually go between 2 and 4K, depending on the size of the asset. With the blank image created, go back to the shader editor and create an image texture. Set it to the image you created above and change the color space to non-color. This is a very important step that often gets overlooked.
In the bake settings where we ticked select it to active, that means we need to select our high poly, then control click our low poly, then click the bake button and wait for it to render. Once it's rendered, you'll see an asterisk appear next to the image menu in the image editor. This means that it isn't saved. Click on image and save as and save it to your computer. I generally use PNG format for quality. In the shader editor, add a normal map node and connect your image texture through it into the normal slot of the principled BSDF. You can now hide your high poly, go into rendered view and see how your low poly looks with the normal map applied. It can help to adjust other settings like the base colour, metallic and roughness to check for any errors. If you're happy with how everything looks, you can use the same settings to bake an ambient occlusion map and a colour ID map that can be used to make masks for procedural texturing inside Blender. At this stage I usually duplicate the low poly and de-explode or unexplode it so I can see the quality of the bake better. This duplicate serves another useful purpose as if I choose to procedurally texture the model I can bake the materials from the low poly to the duplicate low poly. Baking with a cage is generally a much more reliable and accurate way of baking If you found this useful, please subscribe and thank you for watching.